it's great to see you all here and full of so much energy and excitement and conversation. That's what a symposium is all about, is bringing people together to talk to each other. So, fabulous. Thank you all for coming this morning. I hope you appreciated that I didn't make it start too early and for such a long day. <laughs> okay, so this morning's panel we've called the Founders Panel. And we've got some tremendous amount of history and experience and depth of knowledge on the panel today. That's um, this end of the panel. <laughs> uh, and our moderator is Jude Patton, who is also a, uh, a veteran leader of the trans community. And uh, I couldn't begin to give you a full account of what Jude has done. Excuse me, I, um, I, I really, I, I can't do that because he hasn't told me everything. <laughs> and I'm working on him to, to write his biography and, and something of a history. Uh, he's been serving the trans and the expanded LGBT communities since 1971, which was soon after he initiated his own medical transition. So 1971, 1972, Jude Patton has been an organizer and a leader in this community for that long, which I happen to know is longer than many of the people in this room have been alive. <laughs> so um, he uh, right now uh, holds a license as a f uh, physician's assistant, a marriage and family therapist, a mental health counselor, and a veterinary medical assistant. That's how he makes his living. But if you look into the history of transgender activism and organizing, um, you can't read much without finding, or talk to people much without finding out that Jude Patton has been there and has done something. So I'm very, very proud to introduce Jude Patton to you. He is going to introduce the rest of the panel and will be our moderator for this morning's panel. Jude? And I do have speaker's anxiety and social anxiety, so it's a real chore for me to get up here and do this. But I'll try my best. Um, of all of the panel members here today, there are two that I had not met before this conference. But I've known Ricky since I met her in Chicago. I've known Ari for years and years and years. And I've known Aaron for many years, too, and very aware of their work. So what I'm going to do is maybe a break from what the tradition has been for most of the moderators, which is they typically had introduced one person at a time and then sat down, got back up when the time was uh, near for the next person. I'm going to introduce everyone at, at once. Um, and then we'll go on. I think one of the things this panel is about is, um, and the question under discussion is, when you started to do your work with the transgender community, how did you understand the needs of trans people? Now, looking into the future, how has your vision changed? So that's going to be the overriding sort of question for each panel member. And they're going to each speak eight to ten minutes, although some have already told me they'll probably exceed that. <laughs> and I'll try my best not to be too dictator-like in terms of holding up my little time silence. First, I'll introduce Ricky Swin, who is an expert in polymer construction and design. She started Tech Air Incorporated in 1970, a manufacturing business specializing in plastic injection molding. This business grew to annual revenues of about $20 million US. In 1999, she sold the business, and in 2001, she founded the Ricky Swin Institute in Chicago. It opened on March 22nd, 2001, to coincide with the 15th Annual Conference of the International Foundation for Gender Education and closed in December 2004. The Institute had four objectives, the housing of a library and archives, conference co-sponsorship, co digital video education and research, archival collections were purchased from Ari Kane, Betty Ann Lind, the International Foundation for Gender Expression, and from Virginia Prince. And I remember the, well, part of the opening because I was at the conference, at uh, then HBIGDA conference in Chicago, and I was just telling Ricky, um, 
on the bus ride, uh, uh, between, uh, private bus ride between the conference meeting place and her institute, she had media going the whole time and, and it was quite a memorable experience. Um, the second person I'm introducing is Dr. Ari Kane, also known as Ariadne Kane. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Biophysics, Mathematics, and Chemistry, and a Doctorate of Education from the Institute for the Advanced Study of Sexuality, and is an assistant professor there at the Institute as well. Ari also runs Theseus Counseling Services, which specializes in gender issues, and she is actually also a gerontology expert as well, um, something I need right now. <laughs> um, uh, Ari's emergence from the closet occurred in 1971. In 1975, she founded the Human Outreach and Achievement Institute, later named the Outreach Institute for Gender Studies, an organization dedicated to public education and to working with the health professionals who serve the trans community. The same year, Ari also founded Fantasia Fair, which is still being held, and I think this is the 40th <coughs> meeting, the 40th year of their meeting in October this year. So that's quite a long time. And the next person that I'm introducing is Stephanie Castle, who is the author and founder of the Zenith Foundation and Zenith Digest. Castle was a naval officer, a marine insurance underwriter, a ship owner, and real estate developer. In her retirement, she has written and published a number of titles about transsexualism and its related social, family, economic, political, and employment issues, and also other titles. I think how does it exceed 30, 34. 34 now. 24. 24. 24. Yep. Okay. All right, that's a lot of that's a lot of writing, <laughs> and um, maybe I can take inspiration from you and uh, do some of that later on myself. Okay, and then uh, our illustrious <laughs> symposium <laughs> person and um, uh, Aaron, whom I've known for mm -hmm, many more years than we should admit to. He's been studying and teaching, as you know, about transgender-related questions for 30 years. <coughs> He's the author of numerous scholarly articles and the widely acclaimed books, Gender Blending, Confronting the Limits of Duality in 1989, and FTM, Female to Male Transsexuals in Society in 1997. He has delivered lectures to audiences around the world, including more than 20 keynote and plenary addresses, many of which I've heard and been present to hear. Um, he is a national award-winning teacher and elected member of the International Academy of Sex Research and a fellow of the Society for the Scientific Study of Sexuality. He was one of the authors of versions 6 and 7 of the WPATH Standards of Care. He is a founder and academic director of the world's largest transgender archives, a professor of sociology, and was the dean of graduate studies here at the University of Victoria from 2002 until 2012. And then last, but certainly not least, of course, is Laura Wilson, who's the director of the Special Collection and University Archivist for the University of Victoria. She holds a Master of Arts degree in Art History from the UBIC and a Master of Archival Studies from the University of British Columbia. In addition to her appointment as university archivist, a position she's held since 2007, Laura was appointed director of UBIC Special Collections in 2013. She has twice served as president of the Archives Association of British Columbia and currently chairs the Canadian Council of Archives. She's been working with Aaron DeBoer on the development of the Transgender Archives since 2007. Um, I'm going to sit down and I suppose we will start in maybe the order all the way down the table. And Ricky? <coughs> Dr. Keith. 